Okay, hello and welcome back. I have got a super special guest with you today. Um, I've got one of my very, very dear friends from Sydney, Australia on with me. Ricky is a professional boxer and we um, met seven years ago. We were literally just talking about it offline. We met seven years ago and I truly believe that this person is fully responsible for what you see today. Um, yes, there has been other people that have crossed my path, but this guy has challenged me. He's made me level up more than I can ever, ever, ever say thank you for. So I wanted to introduce him to you all a long time ago. Um, but he's, you know, he's been off busy doing his thing. And um, he reached out to me a couple of months ago and said, look, there's a good opportunity that's coming. And I think I might be ready to speak with you soon. So um, here we are. And yeah, Rick, welcome. Thank you. It's, it's oh, good to be with family. Uh, chatting or on YouTube. It's I know it's so good to have you here and I've been talking I've been letting people know um, a little bit about you and a little bit about your journey just so that everybody is ready and and like a lot of people both men and women are really excited to hear just about the energies um, you know about the divine feminine divine masculine as you know when you yeah. met me I was extremely extremely masculine and to all of my followers I just want to let you know like Rick obviously met me right at the beginning of this. Um, he met me just a few months after my granddad passed. And so he saw the party girl. He saw the aggressive, angry, hot-headed female that I talk about, because a lot of people say these days, believe it or not, Rick, they say, I can't believe you, you were hot-headed. <laughs> <laughs> hot-headed is an understatement. <laughs> now, why did I ask you on here? <laughs> Some truth bombs are going to come out today. Okay, Rick. So um, obviously they hear a lot from me. So let's let's hear from your side of things. Yeah. Like we connected seven years ago. Talk to me about yeah. that because obviously both of us had gone through heartbreak in different ways um, a few yeah. months before then. So explain to me your memory of how we connected because there's probably a difference between it, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So pretty much um, I was doing a, a big solo trip around the world. Uh, and I had just pretty much, uh, I was in Thailand, I was there training with a mate. Uh, he had come over and so we, we, were, we were training and I had seen you in the hotel and uh, I, was just, I was just being cheeky and I said something smart to you as you walked past and that sort of sparked the conversation and uh, you were a bit lippy back and then uh, <laughs> we had a little bit of banter and then uh, it sort of went from there. And then um, I think, cause I, I had seen you around the gym and you were training hard, I was training hard. And then um, one day we were in there foyer together and we said, do you want to grab some lunch? And then uh, th that's how we became friends. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's really beautiful because my journey with boxing, and, I'm, I, and I, want to take it, I want to take it back in a minute. Um, my journey with boxing had started a few years earlier. I had literally, my sister was a pro MMA fighter and I'd literally gone, I need to do, I need to do something to get this anger out of me because I was quite angry and I just needed to hit stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I very much stepped into that from an anger perspective, but boxing has been a massive part of your life, right? It has been, yeah. yeah. So I, I, used to, I used to box, uh, I was going to do as a career when I was younger. So I, I started when I was about, I had my first fight when I was 17. And then I had about uh, 25 amateur fights and was training at the top level in Australia. Uh, and then I sort of, uh, I wanted to live life and I, I had an ankle injury. So they, they, I was in the finals for the Commonwealth Games for uh, New South Wales to go to the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and then after that, I sort of, uh, it was like, all right, well, are you going to do it professionally as a career? Or you, if you're going to do it, you've got to go all the way. If not, uh, do something else. And I, I, being young and silly, I sort of took the other path and I went to party and I went to meet girls and be young and, and live a normal life really. Absolutely. And what you just said there, live a normal life. Because yeah. let's, on it, let's be honest, all of us are so programmed that we need to settle down, we need to get married, we need to go out and play the field, we need to go drinking, okay. we need to take recreational drugs, and we just need to kind of like live our life. And the irony of the situation, right? The irony, yeah. you know, that <laughs> most people go, I've got this dream, boxing in your case, I've got this dream, I really want to do it, but I also want to fit in. Because that's all you did. That's that was the choice you made. You can either go and stand out, and you can stand yeah. up with your power, and you can show the world who you are, or you yeah. can fit in. That's right. Yeah, and I definitely. think there's so many 
men and women around the world that will hear that and they'll be like, oh my God, I've got goosebumps because that's what happened to me. But also there's going to be kids out, out there. And I've got a lot of um, women, particularly that watch my videos who have got kids. And, mm. you know, I've got a lot of women whose kids love MMA and they, they love me because of my Muay Thai, obviously. So from that perspective, words of wisdom, obviously we'll, we'll talk through how you've got to where you are today, but words of wisdom for yeah. some of the kids out there that are currently in that point of, do I go and make it at football or boxing or whatever, or do I just yeah. go and fit in and go, you know, do the stuff that we've just spoken about? What's your advice yeah. to them? Absolutely. Uh, in, in, in my experience, um, if, you, if you give up on those dreams, then they're going to come back and haunt you. And it's pretty much you get, you're going to live your life and, and sort of wish oh, I had it done this, had it done that. And you're never going to be 100% fully fulfilled. And I feel like that was a, a big way in my case as well. Uh, even doing that big trip for myself to where I met you and stuff like that. I did two years uh, solo around the world and also the boxing kept coming back to me. And it was although I had amazing memories in that when I, when I was doing the traveling, it was almost like I, I felt like a big part of it. I had to go back and do the boxing. Uh, and it's always been a big part of my life that I felt I, I left unfulfilled. Uh, so pretty much uh, now this is me going back and doing it. Um, and uh, my, my, you will learn, <laughs> says the universe. <laughs> my, 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 my message to anyone who's young and 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 uh, going down that path, and I tell all the boys in the gym, it's you can party, you can do all that stuff at any stage in your life. Uh, where you you got to go for your dreams while you can, uh, and and if you walk away from them, you're going to be the one just disappointed and unfulfilled. So, I love that advice. I think yeah. that's the most wise words I've ever heard coming out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I've changed. <laughs> you are a changed man. It's amazing to see. I'm very proud of you. Honestly, I wish I could give you a hug in person. <laughs> Um, so as, as we know, right, so you started boxing at a young age, you were clearly very talented, like for anybody who's out there, um, I'll pop Rick's Instagram channel, um, thread, whatever it's called, below yeah. here so that you can follow him, like this man has hands that people, like boxers would pay millions for, you know, he is so sharp, he is an incredible, incredible boxer, and you know, so you were very gifted from a young age. You had this, yeah. clearly you had a mission on the planet, right? And it was to do with boxing. You got distracted by women, by partying, you know, um, your family are in um, hospitality okay. in Australia in a big way. So obviously that was natural to you to gravitate towards that lifestyle. But yeah. here you are, how old are you now? 34. 34, so here you are at 34 and you are, you are back like both feet in boxing right in a massive massive way yeah. so let's just go back to when we met because um we met in the october 2013 and i was training you were training we you know we got on really well um then a few months went past like i i know that i left i was only on a holiday at that point but you went off and you traveled south america and you went to all of these amazing places and actually we met up didn't we in ecuador um in the early 2014 and this is this is the bit that i want to just capture here because i think this is quite important yeah this is the man that took me to the amazon jungle <laughs> and did ayahuasca with me when I didn't even know what ayahuasca was I'd done a little bit of research because he was like are you open to doing this and this is the man who actually spiritually awoken me in my opinion there may be other people out there that think it was them but from my perspective this is the man that did like got me to where I am today through many many different many, many different ways okay and the interesting thing about it is Rick you loved the spiritual path so much didn't you like you were I, I always remember it, it wasn't an obsession, but you were fascinated by it. Like you wanted yeah. it to be the next level. You wanted to just really experience it. So you obviously were connected to it, but then you shut it down, didn't you? Like, yeah. In a massive way. I think I took it from you and ran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, for me, what, I, what I've always felt, I always felt there's more to life than just, just the daily life that we're living. Uh, and always, even even you can work your nine to five, do all that stuff. But um, I've always just felt there's more, and and I've always sort of uh, been on that path of of exploring more, trying to chase more, um, and then a, a big part of that was the spiritual stuff. Yeah. And then a, a lot of times, even when we did go to the Amazon and stuff like that, I had done the ayahuasca before, but I I'd, I'd done it a, a few times, 
And um, it was also it was chasing external things, uh, using external things to, to get me onto that path. Even doing my travels and stuff like that, that, that was a big part of it. And uh, I think what changed for me is realizing that it's all inside. So even, even it's a big thing for me when I'm doing the boxing and stuff like that, uh, I feel like I'm spiritually connected because I tap into something inside that uh, I can't get any, anywhere else. And it's through that uh, almost not through suffering, but it's through it's through pushing myself and sort of going in those uncomfortable situations and sort of uh, and, and, and going to that next level of myself. That's what I feel. Yeah. And there's like we were saying just before offline mm -hmm. that from from my perspective, because I've been you know, I've been in your life for the last seven years and I've seen the ups and the downs. And we'll talk about some of those in a moment. But for me like seeing you now and like this is the first time we've spoken in such a long time right especially face to face like this like you know yeah. like I watch your videos and stuff but I feel the energetics are so different with you right now and it is it's just incredible like really really incredible to see because I think a lot of people can resonate with the fact that you chase and it's a real masculine energy to just chase more and more. And I know from my perspective, whenever I was in a relationship, and it, honestly, I hope none of my exes watch this because they will hate me for this, but it's true. I'm going to be really honest here. Yeah, yeah. I was in relationships and I would always be like, oh, well, you know, is there something better? Sure. I would work and I'd be like, well, it, where's the next promotion coming from? Like literally. And it was because my masculine energy was wounded that I was constantly searching for that. And I think that's why I just wanted to draw a little bit of attention to it, because when you said it, it's it's so resonant with most men, but also yeah. with a lot of women as well. Right. They're out there chasing the next thing or the next big thing. And the reason we're doing that is because we're searching in somebody else or in something else for the thing that's missing within us. For sure, I, I I definitely agree in it, but I think it I think you got to realize that everything's already within you, and it's almost like uh, if you're chasing that external stuff, you're never going to be satisfied. Yeah, I I'm smiling because I remember a conversation that you and I had in um in 2018, right? Like I'm good with dates and I'm good with locations. You probably won't even remember <laughs> this, but I remember saying to you, "Babe, you just got to go in." Like, you don't need to be angry. You don't, like, you've got this warrior and you can tap into it. And you were kind of like, whatever. Because <laughs> we were back in Thailand at that point. I've said that a few times to you. <laughs> I know. Like, honestly, I wish people could have watched. I wish we'd had the last seven years filmed. Because it would be a blockbuster. Honestly, it would be hilarious. It would, it would actually be a comedy, I think. <laughs> But I also think I also think it would help people awaken massively because I think I feel that a lot of the stuff that that you and I have gone through is actually really normal. You know, mm. it's really, really normal. Like how on earth do two souls that are over the other side of the world to each other randomly meet in Thailand and then become really good friends? Like I I look at you and I class you as somebody who's like one of my best friends, like in my really close knit circle. I don't see you that much. For obvious reasons yeah. but i i have you in there you know i ha i hold you in that regard that i would trust you with anything like i yeah. would i would be able to tell you my darkest deepest secrets and you might take the piss out of me for it but i know that i could trust you with it yeah yeah 100 you know yeah, it's, it's, it's the same goes for me as well like always uh i think of you every time i think of you i think of you so highly and and especially looking at the path that um We've both gone on it. It has been crazy. It? Who would have, I mean, I wasn't psychic back then, but who would have predicted it, right? Obviously, our souls were like, yeah, you, you need to keep in touch with this one, right? which is why we have done. But who would have ever thought that 2000 in, in 2013, when you were so lippy to me, you were so lippy, who would have thought at that point? Because normally I would be like, screw you, mate, and just, you know, just that be it dismissed. But instead, we've gone on this whirlwind, haven't we? Yeah, I, I love it because even even uh, even though time passes, as soon as we reconnect, it's it's just like we're we're in sync still. You know, it's cool. But that's the beautiful thing about this journey because we are, you know, everyone is the same. Like we're all one. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's and that's the thing. Every single one of us are just we vibrate at different levels, admittedly, depending on how much stuff we've got going on in our lives, but. Every single one of us are all part of each other and the people that upset us or trigger us, which I'm pretty good at doing with most people, it's because there's, there's, they're showing us something that we need to heal within ourselves. 
Yeah, for sure. And, and I love I love you for that, right? I absolutely love you for that. You have made me level up so much over the years. <laughs> like I've had to learn how to communicate. Like I've had to. And, you know, like I've had to learn how to communicate. And now I don't give a shit what you say because well, not I don't mean literally you, but I don't yeah, give a yeah. shit what people say because now I know that as long as I'm open and I'm honest, whatever that comes out of their mouth is is where they're at with themselves. And I'm okay with that. As long as I'm being sure. truthful. And that was a that was a huge lesson that I, I feel that you taught me because before I just wouldn't have spoken to people and I wouldn't have said things, you know, and yeah. now I'm like, no, I'm I'm good with it. Like I'm really yeah. good with it. So thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I'll send you a bill. Um, right. So let's go back to some of the challenges over the years, Rick, because um, obviously you were very talented as, at boxing as, as a young person. You had an ankle injury, um, that, but you've had a lot of other health challenges over the years as well. But I think the most profound thing for me, um, like you've had issues with your eyes in the past. You've had um, an ongoing issue with your heart as well, right? Yeah, over the years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um that there were there were enough reasons there for you to stop boxing. There was enough uh, excuses, if you wanted to, if you want to use that word, for you to just be like, Do you know what, my physical isn't up to doing that right now. But something kept pulling you back, didn't it? Something kept pulling you back to to the boxing, despite all of the challenges. So, can you just talk to us a little bit about that? Because I think actually, um, something else that I regard so highly in you is that you will just do it. Like, I, I don't know when you're in, in the right frame of mind, you remind mm -hmm. me of me because your work ethic is freaking insane. Like mm -hmm. your work ethic around training particularly blows me away. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and, it, and it does like, it was a bit obsessive in the past. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We'll get to sure. the way that you've been training this fight camp, but like talk to us a little bit about that the challenges and just the mindset that you've got with the things that you want to do yeah for sure so they um where, where should i start do you want me to start with the with the hard stuff or, or well i might i mean we'll we'll get to what happened in september 2018 in, yeah. a, in a in a little bit but so just give us a little bit of okay. history of what yeah, yeah. what's gone on with your physical okay so uh, it's actually just funny because Literally, um, I got a message from Jesse Sanchez yesterday uh, and he said, he, he sent me a message, he goes, man, I'm so proud of you about uh, all the stuff that you've overcome and you're still coming back and to be in the position yeah. that you're doing. <laughs> He's a good man. So, but for me, it, it, I, I want to set an example that no matter what, what happens to you, you can always come back from it. Um, and it's like, obviously, I'm a big believer that if you've got a goal or you've got a dream, whatever it is, that life's going to throw you different obstacles, uh, and it's pretty much it's a part of your journey. So it's and you can either use it as an excuse as to why you're giving up, or you can uh, take it as a part of your journey and just sort of adapt with it. And in my situation, it was uh, don't get me wrong. There was times where I, was, I thought, okay, that's it, the boxing's done. Um, but there's Remember. always been some, yeah. <laughs> there, 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 there's always there's always been something that's been pulling me back, and 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 for me to. It's a big thing, like um, even even when I found out about this fight coming up, it was, it was pretty much uh, like, because I think we've all got our inner voice or or what, your consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it, your, your spiritual side. And, and it was, for me, it was it's told me this is something that I have to do. You know, it's 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 it doesn't matter, what, like no matter what, I, for me, the big thing even for this fight is uh, whatever fears, whatever doubts, anything that's come up, I'm, I'm stepping through it all because this is something that I have to do. It's not something that I can uh, I can walk away from now and it's I, I can be happy about it, you know? So yeah. that's, that's a really big thing for me. So talk to me, um, so you've had challenges with your eyes over the years and your heart. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before, so where, before we met or even in the first few years of when we met, like talk to me about what was going on with that because you have to put drops in your eyes every day, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So I've got, um, so they're called pterygiums. So uh, I've actually got a birth thing where I've got no bottom tear ducts in my eyes. And so they, my eyes don't lubricate properly. Uh, so when I was younger, I've had uh, had two operations on my eyes to remove the um, which which wasn't that that big a deal. But then uh, after my heart issue, I had another one where where I had it, uh, and and there was complications. And so there, with that operation, um, the doctor that I went to has a ninety nine percent success rate, uh, and unfortunately, I was the one percent that uh, 
it, it didn't work out well. So he cut into two layers of my eye and pretty much I was, um, after that, I, it, was, it was like torture. So probably for about a few minutes. Which I, I've got my um, energetics hat on right now. Was it your left eye? It's my left eye, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to pull out on me now? <laughs> Make sure you I'm ready right. to learn. Tell me something. <laughs> well, no. Um, when we when we have issues with the eyes, and I know I've spoken to you uh, about this before, but it's because we're not prepared to see certain things. And obviously, yeah. the left eye is is the feminine eye. So, and I and I like we've spoken about this stuff so much in the past about the yeah. energetics and our emotional trauma and our wounds, um, and and particularly the wounded masculine and the wounded feminine that all of us have. Like none of us, none of us can escape it. Um, and it's and it's for, in my from my perspective, as you know, I I know the physical vessel talks to us and lets us know what's going on and I just I just find it really interesting that you're you know some of the conversations that we've had and we won't go there on here um it's it's very interesting that it is completely in alignment with what your physical body is showing um, yeah. and how's your eye doing now is it is it feeling better you, you know you, you know what the funny thing is I haven't used the eye drops in in, <laughs> in, in <laughs> like I haven't been using them and I don't feel the need to use it it's you know it's they, uh, I, I, and it, I'm a big believer in the stuff that you've taught me a lot about is the energy uh, inside your body. Yeah. And I think it's, it's uh, different things. Like just say, for example, last week, because I had um, a, a, my right shoulder was really sore and uh, I, I did it inspiring. Like I threw a hook or something wrong, but then uh, the energetics of it was uh, something was off. And there's a guy that I go and see and he's, he's really good and he's, he's similar to you in that he looks at a lot into the emotional so we, we just, I don't know how, but we started in this deep conversation and he's telling me, he goes, so what, what are you feeling now what, in your shoulder? And we discussed it and he goes, I said, can you give me your breakdown of it? Because he had told me about the emotional stuff. And he said, well, he goes, it's pretty much the pressure that you're putting on yourself. Uh, and he goes, and the rights, yeah. And, 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 he goes, it's, and he goes, so what are you going to do? He goes, you're going to give your body a rest or you're going to keep going until your body shuts down? And I said, I, okay. And so... <laughs> I went home and I made sure I had a rest and literally since then my, my shoulder has been so much better because I'm like, like there's that. no pressure on myself uh, to take it all out so I like that man, you should keep spending time with me whilst <laughs> I'm in the country <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, get in your ear whilst I'm over here um, okay so that's, that's amazing news about your eye by the way, I didn't know that and that's really really yeah. good news, so talk to me about your heart issues because your heart issue, your, you've had many heart issues issues over the years right and you've yeah. had lots of specialist appointments and stuff like that so talk, talk to us a little bit about that and, and then we'll get to September 2018. Yeah yeah sure so so I, I, I when I was used to train super hard when I was young um, I used to have a feeling like a, if I was going to relax uh, after training I'd feel like I'd have like a it wasn't a panic attack but it was almost like a heart attack coming on uh, and so I, I knew something was wrong with my heart. So I went to a heart specialist when I was about 22, 23. Uh, and then they, they found out that I have a leaking valve. At that stage, it was only a mild one. So I, there was, he just goes, just come back every, once a year and, and just make sure we monitor it. Uh, so that was that. And then I forgot about it. Uh, not forgot about it, but just continued as normal. Um, and then so I had my fight at Star City in March of 2018. And I did really well. And after that, it was pretty much I was going all in with the boxing, and it was I was I was going having a proper run at it. Wow. Um, and then so I had actually gone to Bar. I was in Bali, and I was I was having having a, a couple of weeks away with my friends. And I got a call while I was over there, and they said uh, they set a date for fighting for the Australasian title for me. And so I, I, of course I was super excited, and and I wasn't I wasn't fit at the time, so I, I came back. And I thought I'd, I'd jump straight into the training, but uh, being my nature, I sort of um, I wanted to go 100%. Even uh, so, I went, I went I went to next level, which is where I do my strength and conditioning, uh, and I was doing the a group course. So it's Saturday mornings. There's a group of people, and they um, you go do this course, and it, it's super hard. And so the record for the for the uh, class before me was I think six laps. And, uh, and so my coach goes, just go about 70%. So just cruise through it, don't, don't go super hard. 
And as soon as I started, the ego in me and the, the masculine, I'm like, I, I want to smash this record. So pretty much <laughs> I said stuff this, the, the, the young guy trying to challenge me in the, in the, in my class as well. So I'm like, I got to show him, <laughs> show him how to do it. So I pretty much. I went hard out and I did I end up getting eight laps of the course, but I was like, I was going beyond my physical. I was just, I wasn't, I was trying so hard to push, push, push. And then, so I went home that day and my brother had called me and he said, um, do you want to come out for dinner for us? And it, with us, he was just down the road with there's a restaurant just down the road from us. Um, and uh, I said to him, I'm not feeling the best. I'm, I'm just going to chill at home. So that, that was that, he, he was up the road. And then, uh, so I, I was home by myself and I, um, I thought I had a bath. This was in winter time. So I had a bath, I uh, had the fire going. And then, so I came out and started relaxing on the bed and I felt my heart start fluttering. Um, and I, I thought to myself, just go outside and get some fresh air because I was, and then I, I stood up and I thought maybe just take my phone with me as well. And then, um, I started walking towards the door and then I just collapsed on the floor. And I was, I was thinking, fuck, dude, this is, it, this is serious. Like I felt like I, the feeling was, uh, I got pretty scared and I'm like, I was spooked. And then I'm like, um, I, I think I'm having a heart attack. And then, so I, I, I walked, I, like I pretty much crawled, walked out the door. And then uh, just before I got to the door, I collapsed again. Um, and then, and then after that, I was, I was, uh, I started real panicking thinking, fuck this, this is, it's the real deal yeah. and i called i called up my brother and i was uh i called him and i said uh, the one that was down the road and i said hey, can you can you come help me i think i'm having a heart attack and then uh, he goes oh fuck it so that, then by the time he got here i was pretty much unconscious um i was back on the back grass and i was uh, i remember rolling around thinking fuck i'm, I'm gonna die now like the, i thought that was it uh and then so i was pretty much unconscious uh he got me in the car and uh, i was sort of like uh, in and out and I, I was I started sort of uh, dry reaching, vomiting, yeah. uh, and then he, he took me into the emergency, and the um, and then they, it just went from there. So they they hooked me up in the emergency bed, and then they put the ECG on me, and it was it was the worst night of my life. Like the two people either side of me were both dying, um, and it may it was it was it was it was, it was traumatic. <laughs> it was it was one of the worst things of my life, to be honest. Yeah, and it's and it's just it's so interesting and like it gives me goosebumps because um, I woke up on Sunday morning. It's really it's really interesting. We've spoken about this many times since, but that during that day, during the Saturday, so it's the Saturday here in the UK, mm. I was doing a seminar and your face was just constantly popping up for me, and I'm like, what is going on? And clearly, I need to connect with him, like, and check that he's okay. But I. I could feel that there was something wrong with you. Like I just, there, there was yeah. something that was going on. I, clearly I wouldn't have thought it was something like that. But, yeah. and then the next morning, I remember um, you'd messaged me overnight or something because did, did you see me? Like when you were kind of, what? I, 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 don't, I, I don't know why, I don't, I can't, I can't remember exactly why, but I felt like I needed to contact you. Yeah. I, like, I, I just felt like you out of all people would, would know because yeah. you knew my situation and that, that yeah sort of um and I just had that connection so it was, yeah. you I think you were one of the only people that I contacted to be honest yeah. and and that's why I asked you if we were allowed to talk about this right because yeah. I know that you're very private about this stuff and I really appreciate you being vulnerable enough to share it with people but I think people need to know um you know it's with regards to the heart, um, it's it's fascinating. When we block our heart off, i.e. when we put a wall up, and I know a lot of my um, the people that watch my videos, the reason mm. they watch my videos is because I'm all about the love vibration. I'm all about increasing that, that on the planet, but also internally in themselves. And, you know, Rick, we've spoken about this many, many times that you'd put this wall around your heart so tight that your heart couldn't go anywhere and it, and it had yeah. to get your attention. And to anybody out there watching, please, please, please listen to what Rick has just said. He was a professional boxer. He's relatively healthy. Like in the concept of him being unfit, that means probably like a normal average everyday person, you know, um, yeah. probably even a fit normal average everyday person. You know, um, when Rick is, is fighting or in a fight camp, obviously it's a whole new level, but 
he wasn't unfit in the terms of you know he was obese or he was eating all the wrong things it, like I want to put that into some sort of context it wasn't like you had gone from being a total you know unfit person yeah. all of a sudden deciding that you're going to be fit like your body was used to this fluctuation but it was time for you yeah it was time for you to level up and do the work on yourself and the most interesting thing about this is you know like from, from my perspective obviously you being somebody who I regard so highly in my life like I was devastated about it and and I couldn't connect the dots at the time that this was about you shutting your heart down and not allowing love in and out because I was I was too emotional about it like you, you know like you would be if it was a family member or a close friend like you would be emotional about it but when I could detach from that emotion, it was very clear to me and the guidance that I got very strongly was this guy will not survive unless he gets the work, like he actually connects to his divine heart space. Yeah. And um, it was quite fascinating because I actually had a flight booked over uh, to Australia, didn't I? Literally, I think um, nine days later, eight days later, something like that. And the most fascinating bit of this story is this is how connected Rick and I are. Uh, within five days of him having a heart attack, I nearly died. <laughs> I ended up in hospital and I nearly died myself. So yeah, I, do. <laughs> I was jealous. I wanted some attention. Yeah, yeah. Give me some attention. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's extremely profound. And it was, it was very, very humbling because I had a whole new level of appreciation of what you'd gone through. I didn't experience a heart attack and I cannot imagine what that would feel like because that would be like I knew what was going on with me the whole time I was losing such a significant amount of blood like there was no way I couldn't know about it so I knew the risks that were associated whereas you it was a bolt out of the blue it was a total shock and actually what I've been shown since then um is almost like you needed to be restarted like yeah. it was, it was your choice to get restarted, and you, you, you made that choice. Uh, interestingly, I don't know where this has come from, but a white feather has just gone up. In how does a white feather go up? There aren't even any feathers in my house. <laughs> if there's a sign, there's a sign. You, the angels are letting us know that they needed you. Um, but the, the most beautiful thing about it was, is that I was always, because I'd actually been at your your place a couple of months earlier, hadn't I? Yeah, yeah. And uh, to be honest, I didn't want to leave, but I had seminars to run and I had this, I had this issue going on, didn't I, where I was losing a lot of blood. So I had to come back to the UK to get it sorted. And I came home, I obviously was doing this stuff. You have a heart attack. Then I nearly pass. <clears throat> Interesting how my voice goes at that point. Then I nearly pass and it's like, what on earth has just got on yeah. crazy 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 couple of months it was just it well it was like more like a week <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. Felt fine but that week was just like a whole new level it was a whole yeah. new level and i remember i um discharged myself from hospital and mm. i got on that plane because they wanted to take my wound they wanted to give me a full hysterectomy and i would there was no way i was doing it and you'll probably remember I got okay. over to Australia and I was, I had been humbled. I had mm. been, I had been humbled in such a significant way. And when I got to you, you'd gone kind of the other way, hadn't you? You'd gone, I need yeah. to get married. I need to settle down. I need to have children. Like I'm going to lose everything. I need to like, and I'd gone, I need to surrender to this. And I just, I just need to be still for a while. We're, and, we're, de we're definitely at different levels then. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it's quite interesting that the natural masculine reaction mm. is I need to fix this, which is what you were doing. I need to fix it. I need to get married. I need to have children. Like, yeah. I, I do not want to miss out on those things in my life. And I remember us having that conversation, whereas the feminine in me said, you've got to take time out. You've got to rest. You've got to love. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be yeah. present with people. And be on, like, let's be honest, even until probably the cut like the couple of months earlier when I was with you that's probably the first time that I'd ever properly been present you know because I'm always on my phone or I'm always doing something and and I I had taught myself to be present with people at that time yeah I remember and, you said the conversations that we had you uh, from earlier you said one of the things you want to change about yourself is to be more present yeah and so yeah, what did I do I manifested it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
amount of food did it, you know? And, and, you know, you probably remember, Rick, like there was no way I was giving my womb over to anyone. Yeah, I remember that. I was prepared to do whatever it took, not because I had this mad desire to have children, but no one was taking anything from me. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's so, like, now I'm so fascinated by it because I know I'll have a child. Like, I just know. And yeah. imagine if I had just stayed in the old programme and I'd gone, okay, take it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? But yeah, yeah. The, the most humbling thing I think about that is that, again, we're on opposite sides of the world. We're both having this stuff go on. We come together. And let's be honest about it. When we came back together in that September, I was mm. kind of pissed with you. I, I'll yeah, never you forget yeah, I was pissed with you because you were, in my opinion, and, and this is where I was stepping into the feminine and I couldn't quite get it. I was like, well, why is this person not valuing himself? Why do you not yeah. love yourself enough to like look after yourself and do the work? But it's because you stepped into your masculine. You were like, I just need to fix. I need to yeah. go after everything that I believe to fix it rather than going, okay, let's work on what's going to actually help me properly fix my physical and then I'll go after everything else that I need. And I I remember, just, I, 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 I still remember you saying to me, you know, you kept saying, uh, unless you change, life's going to take you out. <laughs> yeah, I was maybe a part. And that, that, that just pissed me off more. <laughs> I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> I, yeah, but, and, but that's the thing, like, because that's, that's a couple of years ago now. And I know that the words that I was using was my masculine energy but it was coming from a space of feminine. And this is where I was confused about it all because I, I did, I literally didn't know how to get through. I didn't know how to get through to you, yeah. but I, I was like, mate, unless you do something, I see you're going to get taken out. And saying that to somebody that's just had a heart attack probably isn't the right thing to do, you know, and I've apologized profusely since then. <laughs> However, I, I couldn't fathom it. And, and it was like, you'd gone on this I need to get back out there. I need to get this normality. And I was like, I just need to be in nature and I just need to be on my own in a lake. You know, like I was just like, just put me in the middle of nowhere. And I remember, I remember going into um, Sydney, into the city one night. And I remember you calling me and you were like, like, is everything okay? Like, are you all right? And I just remember letting you have it both barrels. I was, I was calling you all sorts of things. But it cleared the air, right? It, it needed to be said because... I I feel as if it was at that point that you went, okay, maybe there's stuff I need to work on with myself, yeah. like from the physical, because that's that's mm. why I was nagging you in inverted mm. commas, because I was worried that you were going to have another heart attack. But yeah. rather than me saying to you, babe, I'm worried about you. I'm, I'm fearful that this is going to happen again unless you do this. I was like, fucking sort it out. Just sort it out. Yeah. Like, you know. Uh, Being be, be my nature now, I'm pretty stubborn as it is. So that's... Um... I think the way you spoke to me was necessary because it's the day, like it, otherwise it wouldn't have gone in. Well, that I'll never forget because I dropped the C-bomb on you and you went, did you just call me a C-bomb? And I was like, I'm not using that word on here. And, and I was like, uh, yes, I did. Because <laughs> it's not a word that I use, but I was so, I was feeling so passionate about it. And you were like, oh my God. <laughs> But it needed to, I think that, I think it's something like that, that sometimes like jerks you in and you're like, oh God, you yeah. know, it's like, I truly believe if your life has been saved from something like that, and let's be honest, like you had a choice that night, you could have passed or you could have survived and you chose to survive. Like yeah. the reality of it, and it's harsh to talk like this, but that's the reality of it. We all get faced with choices. Yeah, I, I, I literally, I, I, even in the hospital they because when they had me hooked up, they, at first they said, oh, it's a panic attack. Um, and and um, I had the little buzzer on my, on my thumb that takes your pulse. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't communicate, but I was like, uh, I just could hear him. And I'm like, this is definitely not a panic attack. And then, um, and then when the, the thing started beeping really and about four or five doctors came running in. Uh, and I thought at that time, I thought, man, it's pretty much, even my brother was there. My brother was there and he, he's a pretty staunch guy. And then after he, he, uh, he even goes the next couple of days, he goes, man, I, I didn't think you're going to survive that. You know? It's hard. Cool. It's <laughs> It's heartbreaking, but now, like, I don't know about you, but I'm really grateful for the situation I went through now. I wasn't at the time. I was, yeah. you know, but, because it's not nice to live through, but I'm, I, I really feel it was a huge part of the journey for you. Oh, man, I'm, 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 I'm a big believer that it's, it's your journey. So that's what I said before about the obstacles and that. It's, 
it's all a part of your journey so, and you just got to own your journey absolutely so yeah. let's fast forward a little bit now because yeah. you know like i the reason i wanted to touch on that is i want people to recognize that just because you you know you're in sydney first and foremost which most people will be really pissed off with you for um <laughs> that you know you've obviously you you know you've got hospitality business and stuff like that that you can tap into and you know you're a pro boxer i like i want people to be grounded in the fact that it's not been easy for you like it hasn't yeah. been easy and and actually it's the challenges that do help the growth the most so obviously to september 2008 eight, uh 2018 that happened yeah. you know yeah. um and then so what's happened since then rick you've obviously i remember you saying to me i will never do another fight again i remember you saying that to me and i was like babe i've seen it you're gonna like yeah yeah and i remember it's, you saying don't talk to me like that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, it's been it's been crazy so just with the boxing and that it's um so i'd go to the gym like maybe once or twice a week just for the camaraderie with the guys from the gym and my coach and because we've got a, all the gym guys really have a good bond so pretty much i just wanted to make sure i kept that connection and so i'd go there just to do a little bit of training it, it was nothing serious so say so i would i'd be scared of pushing myself like uh, as soon as i got tired and that i'm like just don't uh, always played in the back of my mind about my heart um, and then pretty much, uh, I think I was 87 kilos at the start of COVID. So probably in, in February, maybe. And then, uh, we went into lockdown here and then, uh, I started, I, I was just training at home and I, I, I started losing weight and running and stuff like that. And I'm like, I feel really good. And then, so I kept going and then, uh, literally probably about halfway, I think it was just in May, just before my birthday. I just, I wrote, I wrote a letter to myself. Uh, and it was, it was pretty much uh, how, to, how to end the perfect year. So like I had to end the year perfectly. I knew because COVID and that. And then, um, so I wrote down that I'd fight him on the big cards uh, in a big stadium fight. I, I wrote the guy's name. I'm not fighting that opponent, but um, uh, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a picture of it because I'm like, no one will believe if I say this later. So I took a snapshot of it. And then, um, and then so the, things have just fallen into place like that. And it's, it's, been, it's been crazy. <laughs> so like, I, I love it because again, um, it was the start of COVID for me that I just took my fitness level to the next level. And everybody was like, yeah. what's happened to you? Like you're ripped and you're like tiny and, and all of this stuff. Yeah. And I just love how in sync we are. But yeah. I remember speaking to you um, at some point and you'd, you'd been out on your bike and you were running and stuff. Cause I was laughing, I was like, Normally you don't run like outdoors, do you? Not not that often. Like you'll do yeah, sports no, no. and stuff. He's, yeah, yeah. he's a killer, by the way. Don't ever train with him. If he ever offers you to train with him, don't do it. Like he used to make me go in 35 degrees in Thailand and run bloody 400 meter sprints. <laughs> I, think I, I think I still got a video of you running there. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly some of the stuff that we've done is just unbelievable but so you you kind of like decided so essentially what you did was you wrote this letter now this is something that I actually coach people to do constantly is like particularly about releasing the old trauma but what you've spoken about is your manifestation right and writing a letter to yourself as to how you want the year to end and let's be honest about it Rick you're fighting on the 16th of December mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, 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 it is, yeah. On the biggest card that Australia has seen in many, many years. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and when did you write this letter? 18, there's 18,000 people going, so it should be uh, still on the main I'm event. so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud, obviously. I just wish I could give you a hug. Like, guys, the, the reason I just really wanted to pick up on that is I think Rick is a really good example of divine masculine. He's admitted he's stubborn. He's admitted he's got all this stuff going on. He's been very vulnerable in the fact that, you know, he's had all of these health issues and health complaints and challenges that have come up for him. But the fact that he's stepped up and he's using tools to tap into his spiritual gifts. And I'll never forget, I was sat in Thailand with him and another friend um, in, in 2018, again, before we had the heart attack and, and I nearly lost my womb. Um, and I remember both of them, both guys saying to me, Lucy, spirituality is weak. Lucy, spirituality is not going to make us strong. It's not going to make us the divine, you know, they didn't use this language, but essentially the divine masculine that we want to be. Now, how's that worked out for you, Rick? <laughs> Mr. Divine Masculine. I, 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 I think that was Hammer that said it, not me. <laughs> 
Ricardo. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'll admit that I eat my words with that one for sure. But the, the beautiful thing about it is, 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 and this is what I'd love to hear from you, and I'm sure other people would, like, how has that worked for you, this fight camp? Because obviously for anybody that knows anything about boxing, Thai boxing, MMA, your fight camps are intense. You have to train very hard. You have to do things that most normal people could not do. And your physical vessel gets pushed to the max. And we know that your physical is doing really, really well through this. So what's been the difference between this fight camp and say your previous one when you fought at the star from a from a um, place of connecting in with you, visualization, yeah. manifestation, that kind of stuff? Because, you know, when I dropped you that message a month or two ago now and I was like, it's probably a month. I don't know. God knows when it was. Yeah. And I was like, baby, you need to do more visualization. Yeah. Um, it, like and you said, yeah, I'm doing it, but I'll up it. You know, how has mm. it worked in comparison to previous camps, you know, bringing in this divine masculine energy, bringing in the warrior. Yeah, this this for me, this has been a completely different camp than anything I've ever done before, and it's it's brought out some of my best boxing. Of uh, everyone in the camp that seen me said, "You're looking the best that you've ever looked," and there's been glimpses of that. And I think a main reason why it is is because I've learned to um, sort of tap. A, a big thing for me is I, I look into the yin and yang. So it's pretty much, you've got the masculine and the feminine. Uh, and a big thing is oh, that you got... <laughs> Like I, I just, even I was just watching YouTube videos, even like Bruce Lee and stuff, they used to talk about it, about how important it is to keep that sort of the yin and yang together. And it's, uh, for me, it, in my last fight camp, I was just pure masculine. I was just going to grind it out, uh, tr train as hard as I can. Don't, don't even listen to your body. Even if you're tired, it's more for your mental. Just push through it. Uh, and this camp is it's completely different. And I, I'm listening to my body. Uh, I know that uh, when I'm tired, there's a difference between being tired and being lazy. Um, so if you, you got to understand, for me, that's been a big challenge in this camp. But I'm trying to listen. And I've, I've been, um, the times when I have rested and I've come back, I've come back sharper than ever. And it's uh, for me, it's even, even I don't feel that drained feeling where I have done in the last camps where it's almost like um, if, or not, you, you feel like weak spiritually. But this one, I, I feel like everything's together, like my, my mind, my body and my spirit, which is unreal. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm listening to you and I'm like, uh, I'm like, a prou I'm so proud of you, genuinely, <laughs> because like, and I said this to you before we came on, don't you wish you'd listened to me five years ago? <laughs> Save your whole hope of shit, but we need, he needed to go through it. I needed to go through everything. And honestly, I am just so, I am so proud of your journey. I know you're going to smash this poor guy. He's punched me in the face once before, and I don't know how I stood it, but I did. He's, honestly. Hey, you, won your, you won your fight, all right? You won your fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said to you after that, I said, no chick is going to hit like that. <laughs> no, I know. And, 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 you know, it's one of the things that's actually in the book is oh, really? that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I have to tell you, tell, tell people that you beat me. <laughs> no, the reason it's in the book is because of I'll never forget you saying that to me. No woman mm. will ever punch you like that because like you're you are tough. Like you are your punches hurt a lot. And I pity the man that you're fighting. I really do. And I don't question that he's got a, a sharp punch or anything like that. Obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be in there. But my God. You know, yeah. and and I and I don't think I got a hundred percent of your effort that day. I know that I know that it was more than you normally would with me. Um, yeah. But I'll never forget those words that you said. No woman will ever punch you like that, and it's true. I've never been here like that ever in my life. Yeah. <laughs> ever. And and but but it's moments like that 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 stick with you because actually there are moments where you know my that's when I surrendered into my spirituality because normally I would have gone berserk wouldn't I if I I would have been like oh. whereas yeah. that I was like I needed that like it was almost like um the, the restart that I needed I needed that to get me in alignment yeah. um, hearing you step into your masculine energy um of warrior but also mm. listening to your feminine of rest I I'm so proud of you <laughs> honestly <laughs> You know, it's funny, even just before, because my brother came over and just visited me just probably a couple of hours ago. And he goes, uh, I hadn't seen him for, for a few weeks. And he goes, how are you, how are you feeling? How's, and he goes, mate, you've got a different aura about you now. Like he goes, you just, uh, 
he gets you, 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 gets, you can just tell you, <laughs> you, you, you're there, you know, yeah. uh, which, which is pretty cool. Like even, and it's, this has been the best part about this camp because um, I've said, I, I lined up sparring against some of the best guys in the country for, the, for this fight. And, um, and there was a risk of me getting, uh, them getting the better of me or, or me not doing well in the sparring or getting hurt, whatever. And I said, uh, and and I said, oh, well, I'm willing to take the risk. I said, let's show up and 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 see what it's about. And the nights before, and that oh, I was a little bit scared, thinking not scared, a little bit apprehensive, thinking uh, this could go either way. But every time I've shown up, it's been I've done awesome, and the feeling of after is just unbelievable because it's like liberating because it's like you you're scared before, but you show up and you step through it all, and that's where your growth is. And for me, that, that's a big thing for this fight as well. It's about just showing up. So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. And the most beautiful thing from my perspective, right, is yeah. that it, you are living proof of divine alignment, divine timing. Yeah. <laughs> You're living proof, you know, because you could have had this when you were 17, but it wasn't yeah. the right time. You didn't have the maturity. Who knows what could have happened if you, if you had, like, had that kind of level of success and fame at that young age, like, who knows what could have happened to you? Whereas yeah, yeah. now you've got the wisdom and what you're channeling. Like I know if you use your um, divine masculine and divine feminine correctly, you will go in there and you'll already know how you're going to win it and it will just get done. Yeah. You know, yes, there will be the rounds that you've got to do, but it will get done and you'll get the result that you need. And and this is, this is why I was so pleased when you said that you would do it because there are so many, many men out there and women that are living so firmly in their divine masculine that it's just, I will do it no matter what. Whereas actually when you, when you visualize it, when you um, call it in, when you talk to yourself about it, when you get yourself physically aware of what you're capable of doing and you call in your wisdom, mm. like we've been, we've been in reincarnated so many, so many times over the years, you know, and we're just calling in our wisdom every single time. And when you can call in that, that's when life completely catapults to a whole new level. Yeah, I've made proof, mate. yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm coming to it now, you know, like I literally, it's, it's, I've, I like yeah, everything. I feel like I'm leveling, leveling up uh, in every area, which is it's my favorite level up. I love it, honestly. And, and I, and I feel it energetically in you, Rick. Like I really, honestly, I know I've said it a million times through this, but I am so proud of you. <laughs> the journey, the, the, the people that we were seven years ago, but even when I left Australia, well, when I left Sydney last September, like mm. even the person that you were then is so different to who you are now. Yeah, 100%. The growth sure. that you've been through, the journey that you're on, and it's, and all, you're, you're, you've never not been humble, but you, you're a different level of it now. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like you've always been really, really humble around like everything that you've got and who you are, but there's this, it's almost like you've kind of surrendered to it and it's just really, really beautiful to see. Really, <laughs> honestly, I feel so proud. I feel so proud. I can't wait to get back. Rick's going to be like, yeah. don't embarrass me again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. you, you know, you know one, one thing that's uh, it's been the most satisfying part of this is uh, even even in the gym and that all the, all the young guys, they all come and they watch me train and it's like they, they ask me for advice and, and looking up to me and stuff like that. And, it, and and even just some of the information that I give them and that, and you see them put it into practice. And then after, like, they're so pumped and yeah. they're like, they, they come up so grateful and that, and it's, everything's there, you know, they just need to be shown a little bit. So. Yeah. And, and it's great that you've just gone there actually, Rick, because I just wanted to come on to, you know, like you and I spoke many years ago and you said to me, I would love to help kids um with regards to boxing whether it be kids that are troubled or whatever you just you like you really yeah. wanted to help the kids and you really really wanted to make an impact in, in the world in that way so talk to me about that obviously you know I feel you're going to do another fight I feel you're going to fight for a belt at some point um but whether you do that or not that's completely your call but talk to me about the future for you like what does that look like right at the moment and I know it's difficult because you're a few days away from your fight and that's all you need to be thinking about right now but yeah. if I could just ask you to think past that just for a minute um you know what does it look like for you babe what what do you see the future being like I see uh so obviously doing this fight is is a big thing uh the reason we're, so, so that so the end <laughs> the, the the end game for me is to uh open up a gym or like a to help young young men 
So pretty much it's uh, and to inspire the the young men. So it's also to go around to the different gyms and 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 do that training and sort of be a mentor and be an example for them about uh, about stuff that you can do with your life. And if you if you stick to it, the stuff that you can achieve. Because literally, I, I'm I'm no better than anyone else. I'm not above anyone else. But I do put in the work. And 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 if uh, be that example that if you put in the work and you stick with something long enough that you can you can achieve anything really. And so, so for, for me, uh, a, a big part of this journey is that I feel like I've got to have those runs on the board in order to do that and, and get that respect. And so this is a part of the journey that I have to go down. Like, so I have to get these runs on the board, even though it, it is tough, uh, I'm still going to do it. And, and, then, and then that way it's like, all right, well, this is my journey. Uh, this is what I've been through. And it's like a, you're, you're an example for others. Yeah, amazing. And do you think um, that you'll be bringing like the spiritual side of things in to teaching these these kids? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a big thing, you know, and it's I think it's a uh, big thing is that you don't always have to be the tough guy. Um, even for me, uh, like I'm respectful and stuff outside the ring. I'm nice with people. Uh, uh, people would say I'm, I'm too much of a nice guy to be fighting, but uh, you can still step in the ring and switch on like you flick the switch and it's, uh, it's it's all about you sort of you, you got to bring in both sides and it's also about being if you can bring that spiritual side into it you'll be a whole different beast yeah amazing because I think that's the chunk that's been missing so far and obviously yeah. as we're stepping into this new earth um, mm. and we're, we're vibing up to fifth dimension now actually that's what that's what people need they yeah. we're always going to want sport we're always going to need sport and exercise in our lives but it's the connection of how do we get the results by utilizing all of our god-given gifts of mm. our intuition our telepathy because we we all have it and and that's what i see with you is that you're just tapping into that so beautifully now and if yeah. you can almost package that up and share that with all of the the young men like like you said God, the whole the whole industry could get changed in such a huge can, way. Can I just say something, right? When, when at the at the start of this camp, <laughs> when I first started throwing the boys from the gym, I was just trying to go hard with the masculine, like just trying to just go hammer and tong with them, and and just uh, getting caught in in shootouts with them, like just brawling pretty much. And I was just trying to get the better of it that way. And I was thinking. I, I, I'm not boxing like I, this. This isn't me. Like it's not, it's not the right right way to do it. And then uh, something was telling me you got you got to be a little bit softer as well. So sort of uh, tap back into the feminine side and 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 be a little bit soft and play a little bit, almost like uh, make it more of a game. And and then so even when we do the grappling and that, I, I go uh, like diff, different. You, and you can see so much more when you when you make it more playful and tap into that feminine side as well. That uh, you don't always have to be going like foot on the accelerator. You got to you got to learn to pull back and stuff like that as well. Now, what's interesting? I'm really looking forward to what you're watching your fight back because it's easy to step back into that, right? Because that's been your program the whole of your life to, yeah. to, to go all all guns blazing and just go all in. I I don't feel that you're going to do that in this fight. I think I feel as if you're really taking it through with you, and and I'm like, this is why I'm like, yep. Yeah show me the fight like I've already seen it but I want to watch it properly because I think it's going to be watching like a different fighter I feel it 100% it is, it is going to be different uh and I'm, I'm hoping for the better <laughs> it's done yeah it's definitely I've, I've become a lot more patient and it's sort of uh it's, it's been good because <laughs> I've, 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 I've learned it. I've learned a hell of a lot for this fight camp, and it's been it's been unreal. So you, definitely, I'm gonna gonna go in there with a different game plan, and it doesn't have to always be hammer and tong. You know, I am I'm so proud of you, and I love the fact that you just said the word patience because he <laughs> yeah. he's been telling me for years that he's here to teach me patience. <laughs> <laughs> we teach each other. We teach each other. I I totally agree with that. We do teach each other, but patience neither of us had <laughs> neither of us I'm, I'm here to teach you patience lucy oh really oh really is that what you think this is your try latte all right <laughs> i know i will i will go and get one. Oh my goodness it has been freaking awesome talking to yeah. you and i'm saying i know that everybody's gonna love it and they're gonna be like getting back on after his fight so 
Um, I can see Rick, um, and I said this many years ago to him and he got extremely scared and told me where to go, I think. Um, I saw him and I on stage speaking about exactly this, divine feminine um, and divine masculine energy and just the way that we can bring it into our respectives. Like I've done a few uh, Muay Thai fights. My coach said to me last night, you've got to do one more. And I'm like, no, I'm too old for that now. Like I'm just, and he was like, Lucy, you need to do one more. And I'm like, I don't need it. Like my masculine's gone, mate. I don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. However, like I can really resonate with everything that you've spoken of. And I think that there are a lot of people around the world that would really resonate with both sides of it. And I just see it. Yeah. And, you know, Mr. I'm not doing that in the past is, um, I think he might be starting to come around to the idea. So who knows? We may see uh, Mr. Ricardo yeah, again yeah, very, yeah. very soon. Um, babe, it's been amazing to speak to you. I'm actually going to stop the recording and then we'll chat. Um, so to yeah. everybody watching, thank you so much for um, watching and sticking with us. We hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure that you do comment below. Um, I'll pop Rick's Instagram handle below so that you can keep an eye on him if you'd like to. And um, yeah, I'll pop the oneness video just to link in with what we've been talking about. Guys, I'll see you soon. Are you good?